UK Cuisine Hi everybody, I'm Marge And my name is Ed At lunch today, we got into a great conversation about food and drink in the UK Let's check out this episode I am hungry. Me too. It's lunchtime. Shall we go somewhere near here to get something to eat? I brought a sandwich with me. Oh yeah? What's in it? Bacon, egg and cheese. That's my favourite sandwich. According to popular legend, the sandwich was invented in the 1760s by the 4th Earl of Sandwich. Rumour has it that he didn't want to stop playing cards even when he was hungry. So he ordered a piece of meat between two pieces of bread. I read an article somewhere which said that the sandwich is Britain's greatest contribution to world gastronomy. Where did you go for lunch, Ed? To the chippy round the corner. I wanted to eat something hot, and the chip shop I went to has places to sit as well. But the traditional way to serve fish and chips is to wrap them in newspaper. Fish and chips probably came from Jewish immigrants, but it became popular working class food in the 18th century, and it has been popular ever since with all kinds of people. I have read that in 1952, a chip shop in Yorkshire served 10,000 portions in a single day, which won it a place in the Guinness Book of Records. I've been wondering what real English food I should give to my Chinese friend, Lee, when he arrives. You could start in the morning with the full English breakfast. In my family, we always have one at the weekend. Sounds good. Fried bacon, sausage, fried egg, baked beans and grilled tomatoes. And a cup of tea, of course. The full English breakfast goes back to the 13th century country hospitality. Country hosts wanted to provide hearty breakfast to visiting friends and relatives. It was especially popular in the Victorian era. Later, after World War II, General Bernard Montgomery, Monty, started every day with a fry-up. If you eat a full Monty in the morning, you won't be hungry again before five o'clock. That reminds me, we should really take Lee to my Aunt Agatha's in the Cotswolds. What has five o'clock got to do with your aunt? Traditional five o'clock tea with a lovely English lady in a fairy tale country cottage. I see. What's so special about it? She serves cucumber sandwiches cut into small triangles or fingers, scones, cakes, and pastries, just like they did it in the 19th century. She makes the best sponge cake in the family. No tea for the afternoon tea? Oh, come on. Of course she serves the finest tea with milk in beautiful china cups and saucers. Except me, I don't like tea with milk. I drink mine black. Shame on you. An English girl not drinking your tea with milk. Drinking tea is such an important feature in our culture, but it's more varied today. Nowadays, lots of people prefer coffee and tea with frothy milk is also popular. That's called a chai latte. As tea is a very popular drink in China too, I'm sure Lee will enjoy a visit to an authentic English tea room. I know that tea rooms aren't as common as they used to be though. As far as the UK, China and tea are concerned, the British Empire took tea from China to India and then started importing it from there. Since the 18th century, the UK has been one of the world's greatest tea consumers. Ed, can you cook? Yes, tea, sandwiches, scrambled eggs. I mean proper food. I make a mean Sunday roast, so when Lee arrives, I'll make you a nice Sunday dinner. That's so nice of you. I'm sure Lee would enjoy trying the most traditional of home-cooked meals. Yeah, I think he will. In a UK poll, Sunday roasts were ranked second in a list of things people love most about Britain. Who doesn't like roasted meat, roast potatoes with Yorkshire pudding, stuffing, vegetables and gravy? A vegetarian? But luckily Lee likes meat. Do you know where the tradition comes from? Originally, people ate it after church on Sunday. 
Not too many people go to church nowadays, but everyone still loves a Sunday roast. Do you like soup, Marge? Very much. And I know they have lots of different kinds of soups in China too. So I think Lee would like Welsh cool. I've never eaten it. What's in it? Although the Welsh word cool means soup, today it's more of a single course meal. The recipe goes back to the 14th century, when it was cooked from lamb and leeks, and was traditionally eaten during the winter months. Can you use other kinds of meat too? I'm not really into lamb. Today they make it from beef too, and leeks, swedes, carrots and other seasonal vegetables are important ingredients. Often the cool is cooked over an open fire. Sounds good. I'd like to try it. I always like something sweet after my meals. What do you like, Marge? It depends. I like pies, and my favourite is the simple but delicious apple crumble. You can eat it with your favourite ice cream. It's a lovely combination of hot and cold. Mmm, yummy. But you sound as if you have something even more special up your sleeve. I do. Sherry trifle. For me, it's like heaven. It's a layered dessert. There's a sponge layer with sherry, then bananas, custard, raspberries and then cream. In my family, we put toasted almonds on the top. Oh yeah? I don't think I could resist it. It would be nice to show Lee some places outside of England as well. My friend Jean loves Scotland. I agree, but I'm not sure if we can travel that far. He'll be busy studying. We can always take him to a restaurant that sells haggis. What's that? It's a savoury dish made of sheep's heart, liver and lungs minced with onions, oats and spices, all cooked in the sheep's stomach. It might not sound very appealing, but I think we can persuade Lee that it's worth a try. I hope Lee is adventurous enough to try haggis and other traditional British meals. One thing's for sure, the Chinese use a lot more spices than we do, so he might find our food a bit bland. At the same time, traditionally, our cuisine is simple, wholesome and substantial. And because it rains so much here, the meat is really good. British cooking has been influenced by the traditions and tastes of many foreign countries too. Yes, British cuisine has always been multicultural. If you go to any British town, you'll be able to find Indian, Italian and Chinese restaurants. So don't worry, if Lee doesn't like our food, you can always take him to a Chinese restaurant. The End <laughs>